Hi guys, Matt from Master Digital here, Technical Manager. And in today's video, we'll take a quick look at the simple and easy setup of the Zyxel networking via the Nebula app. Now you can do this both on your mobile phone, tablet, anything with internet connection or your laptop on the main website. But in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use it via the app directly on your phone. Okay, so once you've got all your equipment, and you've got your mobile device, whether it be a phone or a tablet, as long as you've got the Nebula app accessible. So if you're on Android or iOS, um, head to your native app store. So I've got an iPhone here, so tap onto the app store uh, and just do a search for Nebula Mobile. Nebula Mobile is the application um, available for Zixol equipment, so access points, switches, etc. Once you've got it downloaded onto your device, go ahead and open it. Now you'll be greeted with a installation and sort of set up quick guide following the wizard on how to register devices. And that's what we're gonna go through today and um, showing you how to get things up and running, how simple it is with the Zixel equipment, even before you've plugged it in and turned it on to get things configured. So hit start. Now, if you've got a account already with Zyxel or Nebula, um, you can just log straight into your account. If not, hit create account at the top, pop your name and address details in, um, your email address, hit create account, um, and follow the steps through to, to generate your account. Once you've got that all sorted, just go ahead and log in. So I'm just gonna log into my account here. Okay, so once you're in, the first thing it's gonna give you is ask you to set up um, for the first time. So hit let's start and create a site name. So this is just gonna be a description of um, where the products are going. So for example, B&B. Set the uh, country and time zone, so UK and uh, DST, uh, UTC plus one and hit create. So this will then create a site to then add your devices into. The QR codes are either on the bottom of the devices if it's like an access point, same on the switches or physically on the box itself. And it's really, really simple. Just take your device, scan the QR code. It'll come up asking you to register the device. And then same on the access point, scan the QR code and hit register device. Now these two are already registered on our device, so it will pop up and give me a slightly different message than what you'll experience as a fresh device. I'll tell you how many devices you've scanned and hit next. There is also an option for you to go back there to enter manually. So if you know what the serial number and the MAC address is, if for some reason your phone's not able to scan the QR code, you can put the details in manually and add it that way. It will then confirm to you what devices you've scanned. So I've got a 1915-24 EP and a uh, NBA 210 um, access point. I can then hit next. It'll then ask me if I want to start a trial. So as a fresh account, you get access to all these different trials um, for 30 days, the different licenses that enable you to do different uh, functionalities. So things like Pro Pack, which gives you a full feature set of the services, everything that's on there, um, your cloud management side of things. But you've got things like security trial packs. So if you're using one of the USG Flexes, um, firewall security devices, content filter pack. So again, with things like um, the access points, you can use that to do content filtering. So if you're using sort of guest networks in something like a BNB, you can utilize that filter pack to limit that guest network's access to certain services and things that you wouldn't want people naturally to access, gambling sites or other nefarious websites. And you've got other things like the connect and protect and the secure Wi-Fi trial, all free packs that you can use for 30 days. I'm just going to activate the Nebula Pro Pack trial at the top and hit next. And then it'll ask me if I want to update the firmware. So automatically, um, as soon as these devices get internet connection, what's going to happen is they're going to check if there's a, a new firmware update available and automatically schedule that for when the device is aren't really in use, so sort of overnight, um, after a couple of days after the installation. You can manually force it if you want to, but nice and simply, um, it will just automatically update it. So it takes that headache and worry of trying to find firmwares yourself automatically um, out of your hands. So we hit next. The thing that asks us to connect the devices and power them on. Okay, so switch is already plugged in and connected. All I need to do is plug this access point in. And whilst that's doing that, it's gonna ask me to create the Wi-Fi network. So what I wanna create is the name. So really simple, I'm just gonna call this Nebula Test. And it's gonna then ask me what I want that password. Now on an iPhone, it'll want to generate one automatically, but I'm just gonna call it admin123. If you've got multiple devices, deploy multiple access points, um, you can also enable the smart mesh, which will mesh the multiple access points together um, and just create a mesh network throughout your wired devices as well and then hit create. So that's then gonna give you all the information in a nice real uh, rundown. So it can tell you we've created our first site, um, 
what we've got scanned. So we've got two devices there, uh, one switch, one access point. If you've got mobile routers or security appliances in there as well, and it'll tell you those. It's going to tell you what name you've called it, what the Wi-Fi name is, and what the admin uh, what the admin password is. But looking at that, I've typed admin incorrectly, so I can very simply go and change that. It's already picking up that the switch is online. Now, because this is a PoE switch, it's also giving me on there. Uh, the total PoE usage. So I've only got one access point plugged in at the moment, so it's only using a very small amount. And it gives me the total budget of this specific switch. So total budget being 130 watts, single access point, so I'm using about five watts. Nice and simple. And it'll then tell me any more information by clicking into that. I can go into the device list. So the device list will then show me the switches and the access points um, of what's online. So straight away there, it's picked up that 210 that there is a new firmware available. Now at the moment, it's telling me that the configuration isn't up to date. So although it's online and picked up, it hasn't yet pushed those details through. Um, so you'll know straight away if you've got any devices that if you've made a change to the network, whether it's successfully pushed through. Telling me as well that there's also a new firmware available. Um, so I can hit that uh, and go into reschedule and I can then automatically pick um, when I want that scheduled update to happen or I can manually hit upgrade now and it'll just force it straight through. I can go into the advanced settings. If I want to, I can specify a specific VLAN for that Wi-Fi. I can select what bands I want them to use. So um, this specific unit doesn't have six gigahertz, so I can just select 2.4 and five. I can then specify a schedule. So if the Wi-Fi only wants to be on at a certain time, I can specify that um, of any available options. The guest network, for example, we can do rate limiting. So we can limit the upload and download speed really quickly from within the app itself. So I can get a download limit of five meg and upload of 0.5 attached straight to that access point. Really useful for guest networks, limiting bandwidth, um, making sure that anybody within the network gets a fair share um, of all the services. If I wanted to add a secondary Wi-Fi, really simple, I can just hit the plus, guest two, I can pick whether it wants to be open or uh, a private protocol, and then with a, with a password again. So now I should have two networks, Nebula test and guest, both with password um, secured. Um, and if I just refresh the devices, the switch is online as well. So in here, you get lots of detailed information straight in your hands from the, uh, the switch itself. So it tells me not only um, the usage, upload and download throughout the switch, um, the PoE budget. I can also see what ports are physically connected. So I can see that port 23 is currently set as my uplink, indicated by the little up arrow, um, which would be the connection back into our network, which is correct. And then we can see we've got a PoE usage on port two, the only one which is currently powering the access point. It tells me all the device status, so whether it's connected, if PoE is on, if there's a schedule for the PoE, which is a really, really handy feature um, of the PoE switches. If I know access points or devices in that network that require PoE are only gonna be used certain hours of the day, you can tell it to automatically switch those uh, PoE ports off. The devices obviously naturally turn off, saving you the power. So in today's world where everything's so expensive, it's a great little power saving trick. So at the moment, the unit's showing a little blue LED, waiting for all the devices to sync through. And once that's come through, it'll then show as updatable. So whilst we wait for that to do, um, if we go into the other menu, in here we can see all the other settings that we can do. So we can edit the site settings, we can enable different notifications for different devices, so by default, if a device goes offline for more than 15 minutes, you'll get a notification that a device has gone offline. You can go into the license status. Um, so you can go into here and you can then see what uh, devices and what licenses you've got. If you're bought licenses when you purchase the equipment, um, you can add them directly through it via the app as well, which is really handy. You can bring in other admins just by going to admins and hit add put their details in and it'll then add them onto that system remotely. The organization settings, again, you can just change the name if you really wanted to. If I go back to the dashboard and refresh, I've now got two devices online. So if I go into my devices and just refresh within there. Okay, so if I do the LED indicator test, now this is online, direct from my app we can see that our LED is then flashing a white LED. So really useful in instances where you've got multiple access points and you just scan them, put them up, you know exactly which one's which um, based on it being able to identify it by that flashing LED. Once you know which one it is, you can disable that. You can hit edit and from within here, you can give the device a name so we can get rid of the MAC address that it uses by default and we could call this lounge. We can then set a location so you can use your GPS 
on your phone to pick your location. So that's just gonna find our address here. And then what you can also do is uh, take a photo of the device. So that's really, really useful for a year later when you come back and do a service visit, you've forgotten which one's which. Not only have you named it lounge, but you've taken a photo of the condition and the state that you left it in. But what we can see as well, if I go into settings, then in here you can see already I've got guest two and my Nebula uh, devices. I can log into those with admin one, two, three and hit join. And now I'm connected to that network. Up and running, I've got a specific IP address. I can browse the web. So in the space of 15, 20 minutes, you're up and running by scanning your devices um, onto your network. And there you go guys, in the space of 10, 15 minutes, you've got all your equipment configured, firmware updates scheduled, all set, ready to go. There is more in-depth controls available via the Nebula web platform, so direct from your laptop. We'll go through that um, in, a, in a future video. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click the bell to make sure you get all the future notifications for all the future videos. See you in the next one, guys.